right, so let's draw ourselves a vector. And we can resolve that vector into rectangular components. So nothing new here, u cos theta i, u sin theta j. Now, if instead it's not just a vector, but it's an object being acted on by a force, then we can just write something a little bit different. So a force is a vector, so we can do all of what we just did with force as well. An object, the force is acting on it, and we can resolve that force into its component parts. This is really what this video is about, and we can do a couple of examples. So first example here, there's a particle, and it's being acted on by two forces. We've given the particle some mass, and we're trying to find the acceleration and the direction of the acceleration. Now, if this looks familiar, it's because you've seen this question, the first half of this question, in a previous video. What past me did in this example was add these two vectors together to get what you can see on my video as the resultant vector. And the resultant vector was 6.33i plus 3.89j. Alright, so we have that, but we're not trying to find the resultant force vector. What we're trying to find is the acceleration. Now, if we know that force equals 6.33i plus 3.89j, as shown here, and we also know that force equals mass times acceleration, we can put some things into this formula. We're trying to find the acceleration, so let's rearrange the formula. Acceleration equals force over mass, and let's put that into here. We have uh, acceleration equals force, 6.33i plus 3.89j over mass, a mass of 3 kilograms. All right, and we'll get an answer there by dividing 6.33 and 3.89 by 3. And we get 2.11i plus 1.30j units, uh, it's acceleration, it's meters per second squared. Now, it's worth mentioning here that the reason it's meters per second squared is that force was measured in newtons, and newtons are kilogram meters per second um, squared. And we're dividing force by mass in kilograms. So when we do that, we're going to get a new unit of meters per second squared. We're going to get into that unit right there. All right, so the particle was acted on by two forces. It resulted in a single force heading up through there. And we get this acceleration, 2.11i plus 1.3j meters per second squared. Now, of course, it says state the direction of the acceleration. So we can find that easily enough just by figuring out whatever that angle is. And that's just going to be 10 theta, the j component, over the i component. And theta is going to be equal to 31.63. So we have an acceleration of 2.11i plus 1.3j and a direction of 31.63. Now maybe the question is ambiguous, maybe you want to find the acceleration as a magnitude. If that's the case, just find the magnitude of this uh, acceleration vector and you'll have that as well. Alright, now this question is going to take a bit more work. Uh, read through the question and then we'll jump in and draw a picture. Alright, hope you've done it now. Alright, we've got a... Um, a flat plane, a horizontal plane, and an object sitting on the plane that is 10 kilograms. Uh, it's being pulled along by a force of 10 newtons that's inclined to the plane at 30 degrees. So we have a string here that's pulling it at a force of 10 newtons, and there's an angle here of 30 degrees. All right, now obviously there's some gravity going on here. So we have 10 g going in this direction like that. We have a normal reaction force up here and we have a frictional force here. So friction moving against how we're pulling this object of 0.05 r newtons uh, where r newtons is the normal reaction force. Now this is a little bit strange here so let's take a look at what's actually happening here. There's an object here. If we weren't pulling it at all, it would just be sitting there. Uh, and this would be equal to the reaction force. Now, we're pulling it along here. And we're pulling it at an angle. Which means that we're pulling it up into the sky a little bit. Now, it's not lifting off the ground. 
because it's still being pulled down by gravity, but we're taking some of the strain upwards, which means that this reaction force is decreased, which also means that this frictional force is decreased. If I was pulling up higher on that string, up to here, then this frictional force would be decreased again. So what's important to understand here is that the frictional force is directly connected to the angle that this string is pulling at, and the angle that this string is pulling at also affects this reaction force, which means that these two are tied together as well. All right, let's start looking at it. Now, we don't know what this reaction force is, but we do know that it's going to be equal to uh, this less the amount of stuff going on here. Now, of course, the amount of stuff going on here is going to be equal to 10 sine 30 J. And because that object is neither floating up nor falling down into the ground, all of the up vectors must be equal to all of the down vectors. So the down vector is 10 G and the up vectors are 10 sine 30 uh, plus R. Now, these are both in the J direction, this is in the J direction, and they must be equal to each other. So we're going to get 10G is equal to 10 sine 30, which is equal to 5 plus R. That's an R, not a 5. But we want to know R here, so we can say 10G minus 5 equals R. Now this is measured in newtons. So we know that the reaction force, this reaction force here, is equal to 10G minus 5 newtons. So that's part A done and dusted, finished with that one. Now let's start working on part B, which is the acceleration. Now the acceleration obviously is going to depend upon how much force is being applied in the horizontal direction, because this object's going to be moving across. Now there's force being applied in the horizontal direction, but there's also a frictional force opposing that. So if we add these two arrows together, we'll get the amount of force being applied in the horizontal direction to this block. Now, of course, we know the force here is 10 cos 30i. So the force being applied to the object will be 10 cos 30i minus 0 0.05, 0 0.05 of the reaction force. And we know the reaction force was 10g minus 5. Uh, and again, that's happening in the i direction as well. So we're going to get a force in the i direction. If we jump through some hoops here, we'll get... 10 root 3 on 2, and we'll need to approximate this as a decimal if we're really going to move forward with this, and I get an answer of 4.01 newtons here. Now, was I looking for force? No, I was looking for acceleration. So we know that uh, force equals mass times acceleration, and what do we know? We know the mass, and we know the force, so we can find the acceleration because acceleration will be equal to force over mass. And then we just put our force, 4.01, and our mass in there. All right, and there we have it. So all we're doing here is resolving forces and then applying our force equals mass times acceleration for.